Hi, I'm Eleanor with shiny new previews of the big soaps. Heather Trot has endured a hard knock life, and just when things are looking up, it all goes wrong in the worst possible way. After the botched wedding, Andrew asks her to elope, and she agrees. But Ben realises she overheard Ian mentioning he lied to the police about Stella. Heather insists he tells the truth, but Ben refuses, and when Marsden arrives to arrest him for perverting the course of justice, he thinks Heather's grasped. Later, Ben arrives at Heather's and trashes the flat looking for Dot's money, and there's a scuffle when Jay enters and tries to calm him down. Ben smashes her around the head with a picture frame, and she falls and slams her head on the kitchen worktop and lies lifeless on the floor. Suddenly, Phil turns up. He's been released, and he ransacks the flat to make it look like a burglary, then races to find Jay. He constructs an alibi for them and tells Jay to dump the frame in the canal. With Andrew ready to leave without Hev, Shirley notices her door is open and soon arrives at the Mitchells, devastated, with George in her arms. Ben and Jay rush to Heather's flat, a perfect way to explain their fingerprints, but when they're taken to the police station, can Ben and Jay maintain the lie? Next, we're in Corrie. Frank Foster has cast a long, dark shadow stretching beyond his death, and Anne apologises to Carla when she surprisingly attends his funeral. Later, Anne pours her heart out at the sparsely attended wake, when Sally suddenly finds evidence that unmasks the killer. Frank's murderer makes a dramatic and emotional attempt to leave the street. Who is it? Sunita spies Carl filching some money from the till and suspects he has a gambling problem. She follows him to the casino, but he denies he has a problem when she confronts him. Dev takes a downcast Sunita out to cheer her up, leaving Amber in charge of the twins, but they return to a house full of drunken students. Sunita lays into Amber, so she packs her bags to leave, but Sunita is shocked when Dev asks her to apologise to Amber to get her to stay. She's upset and decides to get drunk, but is arrested for climbing all over a car. Dev refuses to collect her from the nip, but Carl isn't so mean and picks her up. A grateful Sunita plants a kiss on him. Meanwhile, Audrey pulls a sickie to spend a duvet day with Lewis. Oof. So a concerned Gail pops round with David, only to spot Lewis popping out. You can imagine the reaction from the street's most judgmental resident. Finally, we're in the Dales. Adam Barton goes a bit doolally when Kane becomes flavour of the month. Adam still believes that his affair with Moira killed his dad. Adam reaches his tipping point when Moira buys Kane a thank you pint and Holly insists on thanking Kane for saving her life. Later, he throws a petrol can at Kane's bad leg, then spills more inflammable liquid and lights a blowtorch. Before you can say, what the blazes, Kane is trapped in a furnace. But Adam's conscience gets the better of him and he returns to free Kane. Trouble is, he can't get in until Aaron sees him and helps. Aaron begs Kane not to tell the police how the blaze happened, but the police soon want to question Adam. Has Kane grasped him up? Meanwhile, Marlon is unsettled when Rachel tells him how Ashley is treating Sandy and tells Laurel his concerns, so Ashley sacks her for gossiping. Zach has a funny turn while doing some painting. When he offers to pick up Samson from school, he gets disorientated and lost. Megan finds them in the hide and everyone immediately blames Zach's drinking, but it may not be that simple.